Hello there, you beautiful and awakening wonder. Thanks for joining me on the Awakening with Russell side channel. Although, perhaps if you're on this channel, you consider the other one to be the side channel. This video is a conversation between me and my wife, Laura. She wrote this book, The Joy Journal for Grown Ups, which is about how craft and doing stuff with your hands stops you going nuts. And it's about how creativity is an essential part of your personal awakening. We had this conversation in a bookshop near where I live. It's a really lovely conversation. She talks about breath techniques, the benefits for mental health, and it's just a lovely, intimate conversation about simple, accessible techniques for being present and how it is impossible to be happy if you cannot occupy the present moment 100%. I've heard this a thousand times, but never before from my wife. So have a look at this conversation between me and Laura Brand. Stay to the very end because there's loads of great stuff in it. And please let me know in the comments what you think of it. This idea of presence and the idea of slow living and connection through the moment. What, what, talk to us a little bit about that, Laura, and about like how what you're talking about here connects to mental health and how you approach that idea for your book. Well, I decided when going into this book, I wanted when I knew I was going to be writing a book for the adult rather than child, um, and we did play around with the title, the joy. A crafting book for adults and it was a, didn't sound quite as good as grown ups which also is a the, softer. <laughs> the Google searches yeah. anything that has adult in it. Yeah. Is I don't think I think a couple of people are oh, oh, crafting book for adults. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there? Right. So no. First you need latex. <laughs> a riding whip. <laughs> oh God. So the joy down for grown ups, I always knew what I felt was probably most well, what something I had observed, to be quite honest with you, was doing crafts in a group of um, adult women or gr mixed groups was this sort of um, sort of self punishment that people go through. So when they start doing the thing, and it's like I'm not good at this, yeah. I don't think, oh no, I won't show you. Oh no, please, no, it's terrible. I'm not going to show you. And then it's this whole process of sort of like just realize that we're all here we're all beginners some of us have never done this i fully admit that some of the things in this book i've been doing for the first time you know it's not like i'm not an advanced candle maker but you'll find a <laughs> candle making uh recipe in this book or craft or project whatever you want to call it because i found a way of making it kind of easily and um well enough good enough to use and to give to people um, but obviously, and I also write about it in this, but you can take that further and find further skills if you if you have any interest in it. But what I realised was that people feel insecure about their own capabilities, and also like even tonight, I'm you know I'm not I'm not anxious about it. The word is probably excited and nervous. I'm nervous about doing this because we've never done it before. So people feel that about workshops, groups. Um, uh, really good. I, last year I ran a series of sort of online, um, I called them Joyful Beginners classes and they were really friends, friends of friends, people I knew. I, I didn't know some people when we were all logging on at kind of 8pm on a Saturday night. And one of my friends messaged me just before and she was a girl I went to school with and I did art with and I talk about art and my art room experiences quite a lot because it was very defining for me in many ways um she messaged me saying I'm so nervous about doing the online group and I was like gosh I hadn't even thought about that somebody would be nervous about it. but what we were doing we were making I think that was the candle making so she was nervous about not being able to keep up not really knowing if she would have to ask questions and it be on the group and zoom does create a barrier um but I realised I needed to include some calming techniques. So I wrote the book, um, did a workshop last year, and I, I applied. Uh, hip so I trained as a hypnobirthing teacher after the birth of our little Peggy, um, who's now three and a half, so she's four in June. Um, I trained as a, a hypnobirthing teacher because I really, really felt passionately about helping women with fear of birth. And I did put hypnobirthing techniques to action in both of our births and they well they either worked or I just got <laughs> lucky in some ways but I really did uh, with the help of Russell focus on my breathing and I am not someone who Russell tries to get me to do Wim Hof breathing and I actually get so angry I'm like screaming like I don't want to do this I hate this I hate the feeling the feeling of those Wim Hof exercises they bring stuff up 
Like you're like, you know, really, I've got Russell one point, like, your lips were going blue and you were so angry at the same time. And I was like, yeah, it really brought stuff up for me. And so I pl- I wrote in the beginning of this book and I asked my friend, so the, the girl that really inspired me to do Hit Me Birthing is called Holly De Cruz. So I, I called her up and I said, I want to do an exercise for sort of a fear release but for creativity and I've got this idea that we do a breathing technique like a hypnobirthing breathing technique Uh, but what we do uh, towards the sort of latter part when you're grounded in the breathing is you sort of tune into your senses and you get present with where you are and it's about um, the senses so ultimately it's a tailored breathing technique that I learned through hypnobirthing but for your senses so that's at the beginning and it's um, called moving into calm because that's what I feel Hopefully it does. It moves us from the place of go, 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 ready for anything, fight or flight or whatever it is, into a grounded, sort of ready for, okay, I've never done this before. I feel okay about that. This is okay. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to enjoy it. And you could notice, like, I'm doing this now, but I'm also, just talking to you, noticed that the sky is so beautiful in the little bit behind there that it's like pink and blue and purple and it looks amazing against the turquoise roof. And I was just then thinking, I've got to just tune in for a minute because when the nerves come up, I really need to recognise where I am. That's a really important point. I like that thing that you said with the marbling exercise that's Mm. in the book that you did in one of your online classes or groups or whatever you call them, where you said addressing that idea of embarrassment, which Mm. I think is shame in three syllables. that people don't want to show stuff and you said oh, just show your like to say what you did so what what I did was um marbling is actually if anyone's done it quite hard <laughs> so it, it's what is quite it? marbling well it, it's if, if you're doing kids marbling and um you're using probably kid friendly marbling inks you put them into the water and you swill it around and you put the paper on and you lift it off and wow voila but if you buy marbling inks that dry quickly it's like pouring a very liquidy nail varnish on top of water so you pour this stuff on and if you haven't bought i think it's alum or whatever the name of the the thing is you put in the water if you haven't prepared yourself with all the different chemicals and the gloves and the glasses and the mask and everything else and you want to just do it quickly and like i was with this group it kind of it becomes quite stressful because you put it on and you're like so I did it with this group um, of people that I'm really close to and it was funny because some of them are not they wouldn't call themselves crafty in fact one of them was covered in bin liners because I had said that this stuff stains the work surfaces Sophie so she was covered in sort of bin liners like right how long is this going to take what's it I was like well, just go with it try and enjoy it so everybody hated their marbling uh, pictures. They were all like, this isn't working. One friend was Googling better paper to do it on. One friend was looking up different inks. The other one was worried about, you know, whether it could go, it wasn't going on the thing. She wasn't what she wanted. The marbling swills didn't look quite right. So at the end I said, right, do you know what? I would like you all to just show the thing that you're least happy with. So show the thing you're least happy with. And everybody held their piece up and it was so alarming (laughs) that these pieces were so beautiful and and different and unique. And yes, some of them had bigger holes of the paper because the thing you're trying to achieve with marbling is that you cover the paper, that you don't have bubbles of where the water's not taken, you know, the colour's not taken to the paper. But that didn't seem to matter because they were so lovely and beautiful and you can cut out little gift tags from them and all sorts. So I made Mm. them all show that their least favourite and it sort of broke the ice right at the end of the session but it worked they all felt much better about their best pieces I I suppose that what that shows is that our perception about our own creativity can often be warped and having a practice around it makes it like less of an esoteric and abstract practice rather something that's just at the end of your own arm and that's something that's within you and something that's available for us to explore I just thinking then about a conversation I had once and I'm going to say who it is because it makes me look good. <laughs> it was with the producer, Rick Rubin, and, and with the meditation teacher, Jack Cornfield, where they contested that creativity is the what a human is. That is who you are, is your own creativity. So by 
what I like about what you're doing is you're bringing these, you're making these things democratic and accessible rather than something that's at the end of some long, laborious, punishing, selective process, you know, that clearly mm. impacts people because that's why your mates are embarrassed to show something, mm. you know, we're all trying to appeal to some standard that we imagine is there. So uh, that, that dem democratising of craft and art I love. Mm. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know about how you stay present in nature, what crafts you participate in, and how I should better convey the necessary connection between like craft activity, folk activity, mental health, spirituality, and some of the more high-minded or at least uh, radical political ideas that we discuss elsewhere on our channels. If you're not a member of our mailing list community yet, sign up right now. We do all sorts of fantastic stuff, live Zoom calls, conversations that are live. Gab or Matty I've just done a conversation with, it's absolutely fantastic. There are only like 70 seats. People came, saw Gab or Matty. I do a Zoom call every Friday with people, and there's a one one day event with Wim Hof and Vandana Shiva and a whole bunch of other breathwork teachers, yoga teachers, and like people that are interested in craft and making, exploring and scoring. It's a fantastic event. You can come to that. There's a link in the description to that as well. Stay free.